Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharatiya, and welcome to Mainframe Matters. So today we have with us once again, John Murtick, Executive Director of the Open Mainframe Project. John, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to have, great to talk to with you. And Mainframe is celebrating 60th anniversary. Uh, Six zero, yeah. Yep, it's a big one. Uh, yeah. Talk a bit about uh, when we look at Mainframe, people don't realize that how much the modern economy depend is dependent on them relying on Linux mainframe. These are, you know, kind of, I don't know, foundational of the modern technology. We do talk about all the cloud and cool tech. Talk about the, the, the role of mainframe in this modern world. So, you know, mainframe is, is that background. Like when you, you know, if we were, you know, 40 years ago looking to build, you know, an enterprise IT architecture, mainframe was at the center of it. And, and for good reason, these platforms were designed to be scalable, performant, secure, high transactional speed, all the things that you would want in um, an enterprise architecture, all of them turned up to an 11. And, you know, they've been just really become the bedrock of the financial services, transportation, healthcare, government. I mean, if you think of any critical infrastructure that is powering our society, mainframe is probably at the center of it. Uh, and, you know, over the years, you know, it's, it's one of those really interesting platforms that has been really designed from that principled standpoint. And you just see so much of not just the heritage of it coming forward, but just so much of the passion of the people that have really built their lives around it. They've built their careers around it. And, you know, these companies will, will swear by it. Um, and, you know, it's oftentimes the things in our society that we depend upon the most you see the least. And I think mainframe kind of fits that bill in a lot of ways. It's 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 there it keeps plugging away. It keeps working, you know, ask somebody, ask a mainframer about a story about a mainframe trapped in rubble and keep working or in the bottom of a, a subway and keeping working or half flooded and keep working. I mean, it's, it's just fascinating to see how resilient these machines are and they just go, they're just, they're, they're the, they're the quiet workers that, that make our society just keep going. Now, can you also talk about uh, the importance of this milestone 60th anniversary? So 60 years ago, the first of what we'd say the modern, um, the, the current mainframe architecture built off of the System 360 architecture rolled off the line to IBM. Now, there were similar mainframe machines um, before, you know, going back into the 40s and 50s. But this really here ended up being a milestone is this is the platform in which all of the mainframes from today are built from. Um, even code that was built targeting a mainframe at that time still runs on a mainframe today. So it's, it's both of talks about sort of the aspect of history of how we've got here. But I think uniquely, I mean, you know, Swap, tell me about any technology trend that has lasted more than 10, 20 years. Um, I guess Linux. Okay, so let's go 30 years or 40 years. We're talking 60 years. You know, that's that's we're talking generation to generation handing over. We're talking, you know, going through boom and bust periods of tech um, through different strategies from different architectures, pre-internet to current internet, all of those things. Um, it it speaks so high to the staying power, not not just the importance, but the staying power of this. I mean, this is an architecture just continues to remain relevant um, and being that workhorse. So making it to 60 years in the tech world, I mean, by God, that's like 10 lifetimes practically, right? Can we also talk about the the rule or importance or the need of open mainframe project in this whole mainframe ecosystem? If you look at industries that are going through transformations, you know, uh, automotive industry went from a transformation. We were talking about cars a little bit, even the pre-show went from the transformation of driven by horsepower to technology focused. Energy industry is is transitioning to a carbon neutral um, connected grid. Motion picture industry, you know, is transitioning to a world where VFX is, you know, the cost of doing business and not, you know, something way out there. Every time we see these transitions happening, you know, there's different ways that these industries tackle them. You know, some of them do them the same way they always have. 
but there's a long path to get there. When we see open source being inserted, all of a sudden we see the in innovation happening faster. So we were able to see in the automotive industry the move from being from infotainment systems, you know, of, of 10 or 15 years ago to the modern ones that we have now that are driven from open source underneath the hood. You know, we're seeing it in the energy industry where the grid is being, you know, transformed, um, you know, so that we're be able to have better predictions, um, better use of energy, better, um, you know, predictability, ability to recover from natural um, disasters, being able to roll out EV charging and other technologies um, globally. On the movie side, where, you know, the cost of building um, out VFX in movies um, is becoming reduced so that we're able to do more and more cool things with these movies and help keep up with the pace out there. And in the mainframe world, you know, it's the transition to the mainframe is a part of this connected enterprise. And in order for that mainframe to be successful in just the same way, the cloud or edge or distributed or all these other technologies, they all need to interoperate with one another. And this is really where the open mainframe project has become a, a place that is bringing this community together because they all realize if we work together, we can build the technologies that will be the basis for having the mainframe being a cemented part of IT infrastructure going forward. Projects like Zoe, projects like, you know, Phalong. Um, in the COBOL space, the investments that are happening there to make, you know, COBOL um, a language that is going to continue to evolve over time. Um, some of the work we're seeing in open telemetry, you know, where that standard is, is being able to support Z Linux and ZOS. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of future areas that are coming as well. All of these are ways that industries are able to move forward. And the kind of cool part is, is this, this idea of community has always been a part of the mainframe world. We look back in open source and we say, we trace it back to Sharon 1955 in Los Angeles of these, you know, computer programmers and operators getting together to, to talk about the IBM 704 and what to do with it and, and, and how to program for it. So that sense of community has already been there. The Open Mainframe Project is a way to kind of pull this all together and help this community build some amazing technologies that are just really going to help it accelerate, just like we have seen in every other industry open source touches. Since we are talking about technologies that were created like 60 years ago and still, you know, going strong, let's also look at the modern world and some some new technologies which are creating a lot of waves these days. And of course, one is Gen AI or AI. Um, uh, when we look at these modern, you know, emergence of new technologies, where do you see what role mainframe? Is there any relationship or where you see that uh, companies are leveraging mainframe for these kind of workloads or mainframe may be leveraging uh, AI, Gen AI, a lot of things you mentioned like observability, security. So just, I just want to understand where does AI, Gen AI fit in this larger mainframe frame? No pun intended. You know, so the interesting thing is because of how the architecture is built to be so performant and scalable and um, as one that can really pass through and work transactions um, super fast, it's a really great tool for being able to do, you know, stronger AI workloads that are really targeting, you know, some of those use cases, you know, so things like fraud detection, um, you know, things like, you know, being able to, uh, accelerate loan applications, um, you know, things on doing predictability um, around transportation and things of that nature. Um, you know, we're seeing all of these things come here because we have a center of great data here and then you have an architecture that is really designed to execute very, very quickly and being able to do things real time. You know, it's a really unique, um, you know, uh, possibilities there. And, you know, we're already starting to see you know, some customers are exploring in these areas. We're already starting to see um, some offerings that are in these areas. I think another angle that we're also going to start to see, and this is the same with any other industry, is not just of how are the end customers from the customer engagement point of view using AI, but how are they using from their own internal perspectives to better execute as well? So, you know, we're seeing code generation. We're seeing, um, you know, stronger analytics on logging and system events and things like that. I think those are other things that are going to start to pop up in this world. And we're, we're seeing little blips of it. Um, the Open Mainframe Project kind of exists as an area to help help some of these groups come together because the, the biggest challenge, you know, with AI is trust. And there's nothing more that an open source foundation can do is 
create an open governance model in a way that these models and tools can be trusted and bring great training data to the table. So it's it's going to accelerate things. Um, we're, we're seeing already little bits and pieces of it there, but you know, combined with it, these open source technologies that are doing generative AI run natively on the mainframe and the data sets that are already there, it's it's going to be really, really fascinating um, some of the workloads we're going to be able to see driven. How is open mainframe project or how is the mainframe committee is celebrating these 60 years? What, what, what especially you folks are doing or have done? So we put together a great white paper that really dug into it and, and really from both a past, but also a future looking um, aspect. And there's a link on our website um, so you can take a look at it. And we have a number of our um, you know community members and folks that have really helped put together blogs and things like that. So um, definitely go check the white paper out. I think it's a really, really good piece that helps, you know, if you're even not familiar with the mainframe, it gives you appreciation of where it's come how it's got here and where it's going. Um, and so I'd really encourage you to check that out. If I ask you, of course, there will be a lot of things that you will talk about when they're ready to talk to press about, but just give us a kind of teaser or glimpse of what to expect from either the main frame project or this larger community. So I think I would look at kind of two avenues. One is, you know, we've been really talking about getting the infrastructure for the open source community to thrive and building, um, building out technologies for the mainframe. And we're going to see that is, is, is finally kind of really coming together. It's been a long road to get there, but we're, we're really excited that that's going to be coming online this summer. Um, so I think that's kind of one angle of kind of our commitment to this community of giving them the resources to be successful. The second half of it is we're starting to see future investments happening. So we have a lot of strong projects that are really focused on what are sort of the connective bonds of connecting, you know, the existing mainframe with the enterprise. But I think the things that we're now seeing of some of these future looking technologies out there is sort of merging where enterprise is going. Um, you know, so we talked about AI. Um, I imagine there's gonna be some interesting stuff coming in that direction. We talked about telemetry. Um, you know, those sorts of angles I'm, I'm anticipating to, to, to really start seeing come to fruition in the later part of this year. John, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about 60 years of mainframe uh, importance of open source and, of course, open mainframe project in this space. Thanks for all those great insights. And as usual, I look forward to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.